I just want to be fun. <laughs> like, I'm not fun. As a guy, I'm not a fun guy. I want to be so bad. <laughs> I'll see people having fun and be like, that looks dope. <laughs> and I'll tell you this, there's nothing less fun than catching somebody watch you have fun. <laughs> Cause that happens to me all the time. There's, there are times where I'm standing to the side and I'm watching somebody have fun. And no matter what you're doing that's fun, as you catch somebody watching you have fun, you stop. You stop <laughs> immediately what you're doing. You'll be having fun, whether you're dancing, you be riding go-karts, whatever. And then you just see someone off to the side like me, like, yeah. <laughs> you look like you're having a good time. <laughs> you are immediately not having a good time. This is the worst. It's so bad, I hate it. I don't, like, I don't like being the one to do I didn't know that when you at a party and people are dancing and you are not dancing, you watching them dance, I didn't know you're supposed to move your head to the rhythm. I didn't, I didn't know you're supposed to move your head to the rhythm side to side. I didn't know that's what we were doing. Like when people are dancing and they're over there, you're like, yeah, I didn't know it was that. I've done two very off things. One, I didn't know I was supposed to move my head if I was watching people dance and I was supposed to move my head to the beat. So one time there were these people dancing and then they caught me watching them have fun, but I was being completely still. <laughs> and that is also heroin. Yeah, you know I mean, like you really get that. And then somebody off to the side against the wall is like, yeah. <laughs> Keep doing that. <laughs> It's very upsetting, you know? And like I said, I didn't know we were supposed to move our head side to side. So then there was another time I was like, okay, I'm supposed to move my head to the beat. So then I was moving my head to the beat, but I was going back and forth. And that is also unsettling to watch. You're dancing and somebody's like, yeah, to the rhythm, yes. Yeah, get it, get it. I just wanna be, I just wanna be fun. I want to be fun, like, Brazilians are very fun. Brazilians as a people, they have incredible music, beautiful dancing, they're beautiful people and they know how to have fun. I read about a guy who was so fun. This guy partied for four days straight. Four full days of party. He partied from New Year's Eve well into the New Year. So first and then three days. He partied for four days day straight without realizing he had been shot in the head. That's a fun guy. That's a very, very fun individual, you know? This dude got shot in the head and went to more parties and was more fun. If I get shot, I don't know about y'all, but if I get shot in the head, I die, all right? Maybe that's just how I was raised, but like, I don't get shot in the head and keep carrying on twerking. That's. I go to another play where the mortal coil cannot follow, all right? <laughs> this dude got shot in the head and went to more parties and was progressively more fun per party. If I get shot in the head, that is everybody's problem. I'll tell you that right now. If I got shot in the head tonight, we are all going to the hospital. Please believe me. And I will be calling out individuals if I see you trying to peel off. I'm like, no, Cindy, uh-uh, I need you. This man was shot in the head. And we don't even know the circumstances of him getting shot in the head. I was reading about it. Nobody knows this. Okay, I, I came up with some theories because no one knew. I think there may be, you know how guys can be at a party, you, you know, you're out here dancing or you're walking with your drink. Somebody bumps into you, doesn't apologize. Now, now we have a problem, right? So now you get nose to nose trying to get them to a pot. Then you get loud and everybody's watching. And then you get like, like fully, you know like when dudes do this, like this full on in my face, our noses are touching. This is always weird. Anytime I see this, I'm like, y'all should just kiss. It would make more sense if you kiss right now. Because this is the thing, if he's here and I'm here, he could still really, he could choke me, he could do anything, right? Like, this is real fighting could happen right here. Here, you're a little too close. Here, there really isn't anything you can, you would punch us if you punch me right now. 
And so, so maybe, you know, they got into it. They got nose to nose or whatever. They were ready to fight. And then maybe this dude was like, what you going to do? What you going to do has got more people killed than any other <laughs> sentence in language. It goes, what you going to do followed closely by, I wouldn't take that if I was you. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> those two are deadly, right? So then... Maybe he goes, what you gonna do? And then the other guy pulls out a gun and shot him in the head. And then he went, rude. And then walked <laughs> about his business. But it was clearly, it didn't matter. He had been shot in the head. The head is where they keep all the brains. I don't know how this man was shot in his head. And didn't know, I mean, look, what, what I think actually happened is that he was probably getting twerked on. <laughs> Twerking is very distracting. <laughs> If you're getting twerked on by the right person, you won't notice anything else happening in the room. He was probably like, girl, you get it. Oh my God, you really get it. You really, you really get this. You really... Uh-uh, don't worry about that. That's just a loud noise, baby girl. Keep doing what you do. Oh. No, it's wild. They asked him at the hospital. At the ho when he finally went to the hospital, they were like, you've clearly been shot in the head. What did you think happened? And he was like, oh, I thought I got hit in the head with a rock. That's the most shot in the head thing to say I've ever heard in my entire. You know like when you at a party and you having a good time and everybody just starts throwing rocks? You know that common occurrence that happens at every party where everybody's having fun, we're all dancing, and then that one guy goes pebbles for everybody. You know that thing that happens all the time to each and every one of us? Thought you got hit in the head with a rock. What? <laughs> Only reason he went to the hospital is that his arm was spasmic. <laughs> but he didn't even go right away. He was probably getting twerked on in the moment. It was like, girl, keep doing what you're doing. Keep doing what you're doing, girl. You're really getting it. Oh my God, that's amazing. Everything you're doing is great. They finally stopped dancing after like a day. I don't know. And then she was like, where do you live? Let's go back to your place. He was like, girl, I live over there. <laughs> and she was like, where? He's like, I'm pointing right at it, girl. She's like, what's wrong with your arm? He's like, oh, this has been happening for three days, girl. <laughs> I saw this video of this guy who was at a, um, a white guy in, in Alabama that was at a Bass Pro Shop. So far, whole story checks out, right? So far, <laughs> nothing is out of the ordinary, right? <laughs> and um, this dude is, is uh, very much on drugs. I don't know what drugs, but I know drugs, right? He's, <laughs> he's on drugs. Now the story starts in the parking lot. He drives up to the Bass Pro Shop and he immediately drives his car into a light pole at the Bass Pro Shop in the parking lot and then he backs up and does it eight more times, chops it down like a tree, right? And then he gets out and walks in the Bass Pro Shop. So you already know my man is ready to play. And so, walks in the Bass Pro Shop. The video starts where it starts, so I don't know what happened in between. I don't know when he got naked. All I know is this dude... The video starts with this dude and he just been doing cannonballs into the Bass Pro Shop fish tank. So these fish are all compromised, all right? So he, so he is doing naked cannonballs over and over again. He getting deep, and I like this thing. I'd like to think they called the police when he got naked, but maybe they didn't. Maybe they were like, let's see what he does. <laughs> And so my man is just climbing up, dunking, climbing up, dunking. And then you can tell he's on drugs because he's speaking drugs, right? Because then in the video, he swims to the front of the tank and he's like, And when I heard that, I was like, that's drugs. That's not the native tongue of any land. And so the police come. So now we're gonna switch for a second from people recording him on their phones to the police body cam, right? So police show up, they see him in the fish tank and they see him and he, you know, he waved to them. Bah, 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 bah. It's not really phased. And so then they are trying to figure out how he got up there. So then they go ahead and they start climbing up some of the rocks, right? So then they turn, police body cam, they turn. And when they turn to him, 
in the tank. He's gone. <laughs> and so you're like, okay, he on drugs, but is he magic? Because that's a different situation. If it, can you imagine if a magician is on drugs? David Blaine already liked that. Imagine David Blaine on drugs. That'd be a problem, make you feel like you on drugs. And so, so then he's gone. He's gone because even though he's on drugs, he had the presence of mind that, hey, that's the police. They probably won't talk to me. <laughs> and so then he jumped out of the tank. But the tank is like 18 feet high, right? So this man, naked, jumped out of the tank just onto the ground and he landed family guy style, right? <laughs> So this dude has knocked himself out on the ground, right? And he lay, and he laying over here like this, like he just fully, fully passed out. And you can even hear a cop through another cop's body cam turn and he's not there. And then they see him on the ground and you hear another cop go, oh shit. And then, <laughs> and then they, they come down. Now this man is, is like fully, fully out, right? But he is on drugs. And so, the drugs do wake him up just in time because now the cops are over him, right? I don't know if they had actually grabbed his wrist yet or anything, but this dude immediately wakes up on drugs, flips over, and kicks one of the cops in the balls, right? So that cop goes down. I don't know with the code for it, but he's not getting back up for a minute, okay? And now, now the cops are all have bent knees because they're like, okay, we got a live one here. Like, he's, he got a lot of fight in him, right? And I, I almost never feel bad for the police, but in this, in this instance, I'm not gonna lie, I feel, I feel pretty bad for those officers because they try to catch a dude who is on drugs and naked and wet, so he is very hard to catch. <laughs> Basically impossible. Because every time they grab this man, he over here like, no, uh-uh, no, thank you, uh oh no, no jail for me, no. And he's slippery as a fish, so they really can't get a hold of him. No, uh-uh, no, jail doesn't feel nice. No, I don't wanna, I don't want it. And it is horrible, because then there's really nothing to grab, and I'm telling you, because he was naked in the tank, and we saw it, there's nothing to grab, right? So like, so they are fighting to catch this dude. They finally get a hold of him because I think they've just been drying him off this whole time. You know what I mean? <laughs> Through the entire scuffle. And they finally get him handcuffed and they're walking him out. And as they're walking about, this is back on people's phones now. As they're walking about, he walking past people who've been recording him on their phones and he's going, ba -ba 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 -ba. <laughs> Now this next part is not on camera. I had to read about this. <laughs> They take him outside, they put him in the back of the cop car, and this is the first time where even though he's on drugs, he's not having a good time. Because now he in the back of the cop car going, hmm, this feels unfair. <laughs> and then on drugs, he starts kicking the door, and because he's on drugs, even though he got a naked, wet foot, he is so strong that he is kicking the car door so hard, he is warping the metal, right? <laughs> And I saw that and I was like, he must kick that cop's dick off. Like that's, <laughs> that's horrible. <laughs> Police had to come out and make a statement the next day where they were like, we hope that his actions on camera will lead to better decisions in the future. <laughs> also, we expect Officer Ortiz to make a full recovery. <laughs> I try to be a, a good friend to my friends with anxiety, because I have, I have anxiety too, but like, it's hard to, be, to really be there for someone with anxiety because they, they're right. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, if you ever really listen to an anxious person talk, they're making some very salient points. Like, <laughs> Their points are actually so good, it start to jack up my anxiety, because I was like, fuck, I didn't think about that. That, oh no! That's the worst. I'll tell you this, one time, 
one time a, a friend called me. He, he was not doing well at all. And he was telling me how he wanted to, you know, end it and everything. And then just started describing to me everything that was wrong in his life. And as I listened to my friend, I realized that we had the same life. <laughs> and I'd be lying if I said I didn't get a little defensive. Because <laughs> he over here telling me, he's like, I can't do it anymore. Just I'm a grown man eating TV dinners every night. And I'm like, well, maybe you're doing your best, all right? <laughs> Like I'm doing open mics every night to a bunch of people who just feel like I'm bothering them while they try to watch the game. I'm like, well, maybe you go get better one day. <laughs> it's weird how much anxiety there is over the election. Like, like truly, nobody's happy. Like, no, like everybody's like, ah. You didn't feel how it got in here? Everybody was like bummed out. <laughs> you know? It's, it's, it's odd, right? Because it's like a rematch nobody wanted. <laughs> it feels really, really crazy. And that's why, if, if I'm being honest with you, I think, I try to think a lot about how to solve big problems, right? And I'm not a doctor. I'm not an engineer. I'm not even helpful, all right? But I think about <laughs> how to solve big problems. And I think that in this scenario, and I want to be clear where I'm coming from. I'm not like, I don't, I, I mean this across the board, you know? I, I grew up in Louisiana, I lived in Chicago, I live in New York now, I travel around the country. I'm not just speaking with like some partisan idea in mind. I'm saying, I think that for this election, and just this one, right? For this one election, that the presidential race should be a race. <laughs> Because no matter who wins, I think we will be more astonished <laughs> than upset, you know what I mean? Like, no matter who wins, we're gonna be like, I didn't know he had it in him, man. <laughs> that's, that's wild.